this life that makes a person walk in holiness, this life that causes a person to have right relationship with God. It is this life of God that causes one to be holy, set apart by God. It is the life of God and it is the power of our Lord Jesus Christ that does that. You can have it today. our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHerring.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. Uh, some uh, other condition of trauma, whatever the condition may be, they may, it may open the door for a spirit of infirmity to come in. And when they come in, then they, of course, afflict the body. And that happened. But Jesus Christ is still the answer to spirits of infirmity. He's the answer to sickness and diseases. And what the Lord has been making clear to me to take time and share more about God's love and God's power to heal. He wants to heal the physical body just like the soul. It is important to God. And so when Jesus, his message or his theme was the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has arrived and the kingdom of God means the rule of God. So he was announcing the rule of God, the arrival of the kingdom of God, which was to change things, to change the order of things. And as he announced and taught about the kingdom of God, there was a manifestation of the power of this kingdom and the authority. And this power and the authority of this kingdom brought uh, people that were oppressed and possessed by demonic powers. It broke their power and also it brought healing to many sick bodies. And the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, which means that if he healed 2,000 years ago, he still heals today because he does not change. He cannot change. He is who he is. He is the word of God. He's the word of life. Jesus said in John 10, the thief cometh not, but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I did not come to condemn the world, but I came that the world through me might be saved. So Jesus is the door of the sheepfold. The, Jesus is the door to eternal life. He is the door that if a man will seek after him or come to him, he can have life. And he can move from death to life through Jesus. The Bible says, whoever has the Son has life. And Jesus gives life today. And even if there are those of you that are listening now, and you don't experience this life, this eternal life, this life of God, this life that drives out sickness and disease, this life that makes a person walk in holiness, this life that causes a person to have right relationship with God, it is this life of God that causes one to be holy, set apart by God. It is the life of God, and it is the power of our Lord Jesus Christ that does that. You can have it today if you do not have it. So Jesus came, and not only did he meet the leper, and there was occasion where there was two blind men. One text says one, and another says two. But these blind men were there, um, and the story is told, of course, of blind Barnabas. He was there by the wayside begging and pleading, asking for alms and help. Uh, 
And when Jesus passed by there, and blind Barnabas heard the commotion in the crowds, and he asked, what did it mean? Who was it? And then they told him that it was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then when he heard about that, hope sprang up in his heart, and he cried out, saying, Jesus, thou son of God, have mercy on me. And they began to say, be quiet, be quiet, because it was disrespectful the way he was crying out to the rabbi, and they didn't do it in that, those days out of respect. And, but he cried out the more when they began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of God, have mercy on me. He desired to be free. His eyes were blind, and he wanted to see. So Jesus stood still, and as he stood still, he beckoning for the disciples to call him to himself. And he called uh, blind Barnabas. They said, good, be of good cheer. He's calling you. So he came to Jesus, and Jesus said, what do you want me to do? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus gave him what he desired. He said, do you believe I'm able to do this on another occasion? And he said, Lord, I believe. And then God healed. He said, according to your faith, be it done. But Jesus Christ heals today. And I want to emphasize that because we've come in the, in the sanctuary. We've come and gathered. But let us know, let you know that we are gathered for a divine purpose, to meet the Lord, to meet Jesus Christ. We didn't come with the, for other motives. We've come to meet Jesus. And Jesus shows up. He shows up by ministering life. He shows up by healing the oppressed. He shows up by addressing needs. He shows up by giving life and light to, to those that believe on him. So my urgent challenge is that let's believe God today because he's in our midst. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, the Bible says, there I am in the midst of them. So I believe Jesus is here. The spirit of our Lord is here. And where Jesus Christ is, anything and everything can happen. Can somebody say amen? amen. Something can happen to you today if you dare believe God. Don't believe that it's strange or something foreign. Jesus heals today. So he uh, healed uh, here as he came into Peter's house. And he saw Peter's mother lying on the bed sick with a fever. Couldn't serve, couldn't get up. And all of a sudden Jesus touched her hand. And as he touched her, the divine life of God flowed out from him and touched this woman and the fever left her. Jesus can heal today. Brothers and sisters, he's got the same power to heal today as he's done before. And I want to encourage you to reach out to him today if you need a touch from God. If you're sick in your body, if your body has not been acting right, if you've carried a disease and the doctor says that you can't be cured, I want you to know that the word of God tells us that Jesus Christ, nothing is impossible with God. For with God all things are possible. So I ask you today and urge you today to believe with me if you have a condition in your body. Because God wants to heal you. And he told me to emphasize the healing, the bodily healing or physical healing. We talk about salvation. And when a person hears the gospel and believe, they get saved. Jesus comes into their lives. We don't have a problem with that. But somehow people get sick and God wants them healed. And they carry conditions year after year after year not knowing that the same Jesus Christ that saved them, that healed their soul, is interested in healing their body. The Bible says he was wounded for my, our transgression and he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we were healed. For it's a done deal, isn't that right? So we must believe the same way we believe to get saved. When I believed the word of God, that God would save me, he had died for my sins. And if I'd ask him into my life, he would come in. I believed that. And so Jesus came in without hesitation. In the same way, when I hear that Jesus Christ heals the body today, God wants you to know that it is important it is his will not only to save or heal our soul, but it is his will that our physical bodies be healed. God can drive out sickness. God can drive out diseases. And that's what he wants to do. God wants to restore the wonderful power to heal. In those days when he walked the face of the earth, he cleansed the lepers. 
He opened the blind eyes. He raised the dead. He healed every kind of known sickness and every known disease during that time. And the Bible declares that he's the same. Can somebody say praise the Lord? And since he's the same, hallelujah, since he's the same, he will heal. If you need a healing today, I want you to reach out in faith and say, God, the healing is for me today. The, the, the Lord is not angry with me, nor is he punishing me with the condition. God does not need to throw afflictions on people to punish them. He is not in that business. He said, the thief cometh not, but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. But I am come that the sheep might have life look at your neighbor and say God wants to give you life today hallelujah what we can learn as we look in the text here um, that healing is for all healing is not for uh, an elite few healing is not for those that are righteous within themselves healing is for all who believe all who can believe that Jesus died for their sins he paid the price he rose again and he's the healer and if you ask him he will receive so healing is universal healing is for everyone who believes there are thousands upon thousands that may never receive but it does not negate the fact that Jesus came that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have life eternal it is for you today sir it is for you ma'am healing is for you don't discount God anymore open your heart and begin to say healing is for me whatever you need from God know that Jesus Christ came to bring healing to your body to your soul to your mind to your emotion he's a healer today can somebody bless the Lord Hallelujah. Christ is a healer. Christ is a healer. And the first thing that he did when the mother-in-law, he saw her down there, said she could not serve. And she, perhaps she obviously wanted to serve. Or it might have been a matter of gratitude when she got touched by God. I want you to know that when you get touched by Jesus, that touch is different from any touch there ever that someone can ever touch you with. Or it is a special touch. It is a divine touch. And when Jesus came and he touched this woman, Peter's mother-in-law, then she was instantly healed and she rose up right away there was no residue of the fever she rose up right away and began to serve what about you today are you ready to serve when God heals you God wants to heal us today but he also wants us to be grateful to the point that we're looking to serve in some capacity God hallelujah is a good God and Jesus cares for us and I believe Jesus Christ is the same today yesterday and forever because he never changed them. So here he healed. And then the Bible goes on and says something wonderful. Verse 16. When the even was come, they brought to him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Notice this. He did not make a distinction. There is no prejudice in God. He loves the old. He loves the young. He loves the blind. He loves the crippled. He loves those that are emotionally disturbed. He loves the outcast. He loves the bruised and the wounded heart. He loves us all. Hallelujah. And he does not see us the way others see him. See us. And sometimes you may be one a victim of rejection. But God does not reject us he accepts us and he wants you to come to him today even if you're listening to me by way of television and you feel all alone let me tell you that you're never alone when Jesus Christ is with you he said I will be with you even to the end of the world he is with us now and God wants to heal somebody today he wants to make alive somebody I believe him. So as you go through the pages of Mark and Matthew and Luke and John, you see incredible miracles, things that Jesus did that no mortal man could do. He was not just an ordinary man. He was God the Son. Hallelujah. And he could do anything. There was an occasion, hallelujah, when the disciples were in the boat. And they were trying to get to the other side as Jesus had sent them there. Then they encountered a storm and boisterous winds so boisterously loud and terrifying. And there they were roaring and roaring and they couldn't seem to make any headway. They thought they were going to be overthrown and died in the sea. But all of a sudden, and Jesus was back there just chilling. 
just calm, just as calm. And all of a sudden, when they thought they were going to be destroyed and they were so terrified, they went back there and said to Jesus, Master, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? And Jesus got up. And he stood and he reached his hand somehow maybe and just spoke to the winds. He said, peace, and he spoke to the sea. Peace, be still. And the Bible declares there was a great calm. And Jesus can speak to the storms of your life. He's able to do that too. Does it look like everything is topsy-turvy? Everything is going wrong? Does it look bad? Are you feeling that everything is out of whack? Do you feel like there's no hope, there's no help, and you've sought everywhere and cannot find the help that you need? But I am presenting to you the one that can meet your need, the one that understands from the beginning to end what you were encountering, and he wants to help. He wants to stretch out his hand to help somebody today God is real he's a healer today so you need not carry this condition any longer but it just requires that we believe his kingdom has come to manifest in power to cleanse people to heal and to set free and this Holy Ghost power is well able to do the job of God I thank God for his goodness so he will heal you and he will set you free you may be sorrowful in heart. You may need to be saved. You may need emotional healing. You may need healing from a broken heart. You may need healing from wounds of the past. You may need the curse broken from your life so that you can go forward and not repeat the patterns of your ancestors. But whatever you need today, may I encourage you to begin to believe right now and not discount yourself open wide your heart and believe and say healing is for me today whether it's physical or otherwise say healing is for me today and let God have his way we all have faith everybody don't have the same measure of faith but if you're a Christian God has dealt to every one of us a measure of faith. And that measure of faith certainly can be enough to be healed. So if you need healing, I want you to believe God today and release your faith so that Jesus can be Lord in your life. Can somebody just give God some praise? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Jesus is the answer for this world today. It is not our government. It is not the um, uh, institutions of society. It is Jesus Christ. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. He did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God is a savior. He's earned the name savior. He preserves. He saves. He does not destroy. He saves. And he wants to save and heal today. And you can receive the life that comes from Jesus. It's about life. It's about life, but it's the life of God, the divine life. That's why the word, as you read that word or as you hear the word preached, that word brings life. It brings life. Paul and Peter both were preaching at different instances. And uh, Paul was preaching one time, and as he was preaching the word of life, one man received faith to be healed. And as this man received faith to be healed, Paul perceived it and he reached over and says, stand up right on your feet. And immediately something happened to this man. And Peter on one occasion, as he was going into the temple, there was a man there that had been there for years, obviously, because maybe even during Jesus' time, Jesus didn't choose to heal him then. But they were going into the temple at this strategic hour of prayer. And as they were going into the temple, um, he uh, began to look on them uh, looking for some arms and Peter says look on us silver and gold have we none 
but such as we have give we to you in the name of Jesus Christ rise up and walk and as he stretched forth his hand to pull him up all of a sudden his feet and his ankle bones received supernatural strength from God and this man was made whole and this man was so happy he walked with them into the temple just leaping and walking and praising God God wants to bring joy into your life God wants to bring joy into your situation do not doubt but believe only. And everywhere Jesus, when he was going to do a miracle that people doubted, he just says, fear not. Believe only and he shall be whole. And so Jesus says today, do not fear, do not doubt, but believe what he says. And the power of our Lord will come forth and minister. For Jesus is here today and he's here on assignment to heal somebody, to loose some captive that's been bound. And you may feel bound in your mind, bound in your emotions and bound in your body. You can't break free, but Jesus can set you free. He specializes in things that are impossible with man. For with God nothing shall be impossible somebody there's a miracle for you today somebody there is the divine life of God that wants to flow and penetrate your heart today like never before only believe because all things are possible look at somebody that says only believe today and it will happen to you praise God let's give him thanks praise the Lord glory to God the gospel that Jesus preached was the gospel of good news, was the good news of God concerning his son. And it takes faith. It is faith. In the whole gospels, uh, Jesus emphasized faith to those that had faith. He emphasized it there. If they had great faith or they, their faith was key, then he would always point it out. Your faith has made you whole. He said, great is your faith. Or somebody, he said, uh, um, your faith is little. In other words, how is it you have no faith or whatever? But faith was so key in the operation of God. Why? Because God is invisible and you do not see him. But he's like the wind. He's real. And so even right now while we're in this place today, if you have a special need, if you can lock in to the fact that Jesus knows your every need, and he's willing to do something about it, then God will step in your situation and he'll do something about it. Only believe for all things are possible. And I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me now at this point. And we're going to pray and ask Jesus that his wonderful kingdom manifest. Lord Jesus, I thank you. And we honor you today for your precious son, Jesus Christ. We bless you because you're marvelously wonderful. You are excellent in all of your ways. We lift you up and we laud you. We extol you. We magnify you. We give your name to us honor and your name to glory for you love us with an everlasting love stretch forth now your hands of healing and mercy and minister unto the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ surely we'll honor you surely we'll give your name to glory for it's rightfully yours and this we ask in Jesus name now Lord be lifted up and be glorified. Show yourself mighty on the behalf of someone who's trusting you right now. We thank you now. And we give your name to honor. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask my wife now. We're going to agree for the TV audience here and pray for special needs of the people. And then we're going to pray for the saints. Precious Father, we thank you now. It is not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. You are real. You are good. You are alive today. And we thank you for the life of God. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Take full control now. Remember those that are under the sound of our voice those that heard the message of the kingdom for your kingdom has come to 
destroy the works of the enemy. Thank you for your blessed Holy Spirit. The great agent, O oh God, of this kingdom now. Have your precious way. Somebody is oppressed. Somebody is carrying burdens. And now, Lord, lift the burdens by your divine spirit. Minister, Lord, help and life. Oh, in the name of Jesus, let someone know that you are available. Let someone know, God, that, that you will heal and quicken and make alive. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we take full authority now over the very atmosphere. And we forbid and cancel and break and bind back every spirit that interferes with the glory of your presence now in the name of jesus and we release this divine power oh god upon your people now that you might work your will work in the atmosphere let your presence lord be felt in the name of jesus touch the tv audience lord god somebody lord that's going through somebody lord god that needs hope today somebody whose back is against the wall i pray for them right now that you would heal them by your spirit in the name of jesus christ we honor you and give you praise thank you lord we'll ask that you'll stand once again hallelujah The healer is here, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes. I would like for you to just, if you will, lift your hands and begin to welcome the Holy Spirit. Make him feel welcome. Oh, God, I thank you. Just make him feel welcome. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your precious spirit. Send the anointing, that yoke-destroying power. I relieve the oppressed now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. We give your name to praise and we give your great name to honor. Bless and release. In Jesus' name. 